Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase a memory matching game which I created with Java and more precisely JavaFX for my graphical user interface. So, in my last video, I showcased more or less the same game but just in a command line setup. And now I kind of translated the last project into this one with a graphical user interface with a GUI. And just to showcase how it works, we have these eight areas. Well, for now, I'm actually just printing the solution. I know that's a bit cheating, but just to actually know what's going on, but let's not look at that. So we can turn two areas. We now see we have B and A. And if we just turn them and wait, after 1.5 seconds, they will be flipped back if they're not matching. So again, we had B and A. And let's see, we then had D and D. For now, I'm also just printing some information in the console just to make sure everything is working. But D and D is matching. They're not going to be turned back. And then again, look at any two areas. B and B matching. A and A. C and C. And now I won. But for now, it's just simply the working game. There's no extra setup, no text describing what's going on, no reset button. And we just look for letters, which honestly might be a bit boring. So in the future, I might either change this. I think I'm going to make a more like finished version, which either have some color matching or it might be actually some pictures of fruit or animals, for example. But another feature, let me just showcase, if you turn two and you just want to keep going, you don't want to wait for them actually to be turned back. You can take two and then start looking at the next one. They're then going to be flipped directly after looking at the next one. You can do look, look, no look, no look, no look, no look, no look, and so on. So, so that's the base game. However, there's still a few things I do not really take care of. For example, you can double click to find that this field obviously is matching with itself, so it's going to stay there. So you can check and just do it like this, and now everything is, is turned. And that's not proper. But let's have a look at some of the code. But more in general, just talk about basic concept because I'm not going to go through everything line by line. It's actually not too complicated. And I, for once, actually have added some comments to define what's actually going on in some of the more general sense. And I will also leave a link in the description where you can actually have a look at the code yourself. But in general, I have my application, part of JavaFX. I then have my controller where I run the basics stuff interacting with the user interface but then also have a memory game class which handles the concept which is actually the more or less the same from my last video which will be linked up here where i create a memory board based on all these options we have a a b b c c d d that then randomizedly put into another list which is then used for my to create my board and this randomly created list is actually one printed down here and as mentioned, take a look at my old video if you want to know more about how this actually works. But this in general just used to set up the board and then check the board positions and then compare if two positions are a match on inside my controller. Then of course I also have all my buttons. I have a link to my memory game class where I create an object we can then use for the setup. I have another array list where I will put my buttons into this array list. I have a timeline, which is used to hide the buttons after 1.5 seconds when two buttons are shown that are not a match. Then have a bunch of variables to keep track of when I'm looking at the first button. So when in the sense of we want to look at one button and another. So now we have looked at one button. We then looked at a second button. We then compare them and hide them if they're not the same. We then keep track of what was the first button, what was on the second button. And we do have a match. Initializing, we set up the game board with all the buttons to a buttons array list. We then have this buttons clicked, which is when any of the buttons are clicked. We then first check is we if we are in the state of a first button being clicked or a second button being clicked. So we kind of have like two functionalities of the buttons depending on if it's the first or second button. If it's just the first button, we start to check if there's not a match. We then hide the two last buttons. We stop the timeline that's going to hide the two last buttons. 
that are meant to false. First button click is now true. So next time we click a button, we will skip this part and go into the second button area. We then find the button ID by the event of our button clicked method. We then turn this ID into a integer because the button IDs are like button zero. We then take the string and just grab the last char from the string because that's going to be the index of the button. So we have the button ID, which is going to be the containing the index of the button in our ArrayList. And we then simply set the text of this button to be whatever it should be. So first button clicked, change the text to A. Next time I click a button, this area is then skipped. So now we have our first button clicked is false. We then find, like we did for the first button, the information of this button, change the text of this button. Uh, we then simply just check using our memory game object if the two buttons are the same. We print match, set match to true, and we return. And because we're returning here, we will never give, get into the area of the timeline which then hides the button. So we're not like not hiding the buttons, we're just not calling the method that actually hides the buttons. And hiding the buttons is very simply just turning the text from the buttons into an empty string. And that's actually pretty much it. So as you can see, the setup is relatively simple and it's built around like the general concept of object oriented programming where we have this memory game class which handles the general sense of the game. And we then, it's not completely celebrated, it could be a bit better, but in general, we like the concept of the controller only handling the functionality that are actually directly connected to the graphical user interface. So, like everything that's just plain Java, and actually in this case, like just a plain game to be separated from our controller class. So that is the general sense of the game, but let's at last just have a quick look at the scene builder setup, which is actually very simple. We just have an anchor pane containing a V-box, containing some H-boxes, just to make this grid-like setup of buttons. In my case, it just turned the last button red because we're only using the first eight buttons, but I like to keep it there to just have this actually square that looks a bit more proper. And then as mentioned, for each button, we just simply have a setup where each button has its own ID, and then all the buttons is calling the same button click method. And I like doing it this way, where all the buttons are calling the same method, because it allows us to have this setup where we might have a method that's a bit long, and we should probably actually separate this out and have this the first button clicked in its own method and second button clicked it is in its own method so we kind of separate it out but as mentioned this is small it's just the first version it's a i don't know we can call it an mvc minimal viable or not mvc mvp minimal viable product just to showcase we have this memory matching game which works And we could also add a bunch of stuff. For example, we would keep track of how many turns did it take to actually win. You could, that might be a bit complicated, but you could probably add like a prompt first asking how many fields do you like in your memory matching game? So now it's a nine by or three by three. You can probably have a, like a four by four without making it too complicated. But in general, this is my version or my translation of first my memory matching game in a CLI setup. So now a graphical user interface using JavaFX. And if you enjoyed this quick showcase, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.